Hey friends, David Schimmel here. Today I'm going to introduce you to the basics of DJing using a free open source program called Mix. It's similar enough to commercial software such as Traktor and Serato, and to popular hardware options like CDJs that your skills will transfer to these tools. Mix also has a ton of features, so we won't be able to go into all of them, but by the end of this video, you should be knowledgeable enough to perform and record your own DJ sets, so let's get into it. To start, go to the Mix website at mixxx.org and download and install the version of the software that works for your computer's operating system. Next, open Mix, and once it finishes loading, you'll be greeted with this user interface. In the middle, on either side, you have the two track decks, and this is where we'll load in songs for playback during our DJ set. In the middle, you have the mixer, which has knobs for each of the EQ frequencies, high, mids, and lows, along with volume sliders for each deck and a crossfader in the middle. Down below, you have the library section, which lets you search your songs via text. It lets you select folders on your computer and display all of the audio files within that folder. And over here, you can see all of the files in the currently selected folder, along with their metadata. And if you press spacebar, it'll expand this, this section so you can see more of what's available to you. If we load a track into one of the decks by clicking and dragging it, you'll see this waveform appear in the top section, along with a series of vertical lines, which is called the beat grid. That's where Mix has detected uh, the beats in your song. Similarly, if you drag a track into the second deck, you'll see its waveform appear below the first one. Before we get into DJing, let's make sure that Mix is configured the way we want it. So go to Options, Preferences, and in the Sound Hardware section, make sure you have something set for this main output. Otherwise, you won't hear anything when you play tracks in Mix. Also, set your key lock engine to Rubber Band R3, and this will make sure that the sound quality is as high as possible when you're playing back tracks at different tempos and keys. If your computer can't handle it, of course, you can use one of the faster but lower quality algorithms. Next, in the library section, you can add additional folders that Mix will search through when it uh, adds uh, audio tracks into your library. So anywhere you download music to, make sure that it's in this music directory section. And also check the rescan directories on startup box so that you always have the latest files uh, available in your mix library. Next, go to the recording section. And this, file, uh, this path here is where any recordings you make in mix will be stored. You can press this record button while you're playing around in mix and it'll record your session. Next, go to key detection. And if you don't know the names of the 12 keys very well, I recommend enabling either Open Key Traditional or Lancelot Traditional. And these create a parallel numeric system that goes alongside the traditional alphabetical system for labeling keys. And if you recall uh, my previous video where I discussed the circle of fifths, you'll notice that in these numbering systems, keys that are a fifth apart, like A and E, they differ by one number, 11 and 12 in this case. And it's also worth pointing out that 12 and one are considered next to each other for these purposes. So it resets once you get to 12. This uh, circle of fifths idea will come in handy later when we discuss harmonic mixing in more depth. Finally, select normalization and make sure that apply replay gain is checked. And this will help ensure that all of your tracks are roughly the same volume so you don't get sudden jumps up or down when you're mixing into the next track. It'll create a more consistent sound throughout your DJ mix. Now we're ready to make some music. In general, for any song that you want to include in your DJ set, you'll need to have an audio file like an MP3 or a wave of that song on your computer hard drive. There are some services like Beatport that allow you to stream tracks over the internet but Mix doesn't support that. And furthermore, if you go to a gig and your internet connection is unreliable or non-existent, then you won't be able to perform. So it's considered best practice to have all of your tracks on your hard drive ahead of time, and then you'll be good to go. 
You can buy these files from all sorts of different websites such as Beatport, Bandcamp, Amazon, Apple Music, etc. You can also rip them from YouTube, but the audio quality tends to be a lot lower. And even setting aside the legal issues, uh, I would only recommend it for practice purposes. So once you have an audio file, the first time you load it into one of the decks, Mix will analyze it to figure out its tempo, key, and replay gain settings. So let me show you how that works. First, I'm going to unload these tracks by hitting the eject button. And let me load this track in so it'll do its analysis. And you'll see it figured out that the track's at 126 beats per minute, and it's in C minor. And it also drew a beat grid on the track, but uh, I can tell that it didn't get it uh, exactly right uh, because I produced this track, so I know where the kick drums actually hit. So to solve that problem, we can click and drag the waveform until that blue line lines up with the beat that we're aiming at. And then we hit this adjust beat grid button and it will redraw the grid with the same tempo, but taking into account the hint that we gave it. Our track is loaded and analyzed, so let's give it a spin. Press the play pause button to start playback. I'm looking for Harry. And press it again to pause. Now, this slider over here controls the playback speed. So if I drag it down, it speeds up. If I drag it up, it slows down. So that sounds like this. I'm looking for Harry. Now, you'll notice that the pitch of the song didn't change, even though I changed the playback speed. And that's because I have this key lock button turned on. If I turn it off, then when I slow down the track, it'll go down in pitch. And when I speed it up, it'll go up in pitch. And that sounds like this. I'm looking to buy a... In general, I prefer to leave the key lock on because songs tend to sound better in their original key. And furthermore, when I'm doing harmonic mixing, I want the labeled key of the song to correspond to the actual key that it's being played back in, so I don't get confused as I'm mixing. If you do want to change the key of the song, you can use these arrows next to the uh, key annotation. That sounds like this. Buy an automobile from him. I just don't trust anybody like that. A friendly car or one that talks. And of course, the other deck uh, behaves exactly the same way, with the same controls and everything. Believe it or not, you now know enough to be a minimum viable DJ. The most important skill that a DJ can possess is that of song selection, so choosing tracks that work well together and arranging them in a coherent order. If you already curate your own playlist, then you've got a great head start here. So for instance, you could load your first track into your first deck, start playing it, put your second track in the second deck, wait for the first one to come to an end naturally, then start playing your second track on your second deck, then load your third track into your first deck, wait for the second deck to finish, and start playing uh, deck one from the beginning there, and just continuing alternating until you play through your whole DJ set. And that'll get you like 80, 90% of the way there. But to really experience the magic of DJing, we want to take advantage of the mixer, the dual playback decks, and all the other features to be able to transition smoothly between songs as we're playing them and create a continuous audio experience for the listener. So let's get into some examples of how to do that. For our first example, I'll show a simple synchronized crossfader transition. So let me load in my second track, and you'll notice that it's at 124 beats per minute, and our first track's at 126. Now, we want them to be at the same tempo, otherwise they're going to clash and it will sound terrible to the listener. So we could decrease the playback speed of this one slightly till we get to 124, or we could uh, speed the second deck up till it gets to 126, but we're not in the days of vinyl anymore. We now have this feature called sync, which uh, enforces that both decks are playing back at the same tempo. So because this deck is going to be playing first, I'm going to hit the crown icon on it first, and then I'll click the crown over here, and you'll see that its tempo jumps to 126, which perfectly matches our first deck. Um, next, when we mix in our next song, we're going to be playing it back at the beginning. And we want to make sure that when we press this button, it happens right on the beat. So to do that, make sure that this magnet icon is enabled, the quantize button. And it's something we've seen in Ableton before where we used quantize to put all the notes on the grid. 
quantize here basically ensures that every time you press a button, it will be nudged onto the nearest uh, grid marker. So it keeps your mix nice and tight. Now, where are we going to mix the second track into the first one? Well, usually with EDM, uh, there's 16 to 32 bars of intro and outro for each track that tends to just have drums or other sparse instrumentation. And those are put in place by producers so that DJs have an easier time mixing between two songs. Um, so you want to look for tracks that say uh, extended mix or alternatively avoid tracks that are called uh, radio edits. So. For our own bookkeeping purposes, and to make this easier, we're going to add a cue point where the outro for our first track starts. So we can click in here to jump ahead, and I know that the outro starts around here, so I'm going to click this number eight to add a cue point there. And so whenever I click this eight, the playback head will jump right to that point in the song, like so. And I'm also going to use that as a visual marker to know when to start playing back the second track from the beginning. And I recommend that when you import a song for the first time, you set up these cue points at the beginning of the song, uh, the end where the outro starts, and then in any other significant um, moment in the song, like where the drops start or where the buildups start. And that way, your track is nicely annotated so that um, if you're trying to do a transition on the fly, you can better understand where you are in each of your songs and you'll understand your material better, which makes DJing uh, a lot less uh, anxiety inducing. So um, one final point to note, uh, first song is in C minor and the second is in F minor. So they're a fifth apart, which you can tell because their numbers only differ by one. And that way, when we, that follows the principles of harmonic mixing, where we want to mix between songs that are in closely related keys, so you get a smoother sound um, from that kind of transition. So to sum up, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with the crossfader all the way on the left. So we get 100% volume from deck one, 0% from deck two. Then when the playback for the first deck gets to eight, I'm going to start the second deck and then I'm gonna gradually bring the crossfader over until you know, both tracks are playing at full volume and then gradually bring it all the way to the right so we'll only hear the second deck. So let's hear what that sounds like. For this next one, instead of using the crossfader, which can sound kind of timid, we'll use the EQ controls to create a more assertive, impactful transition. So to review, we have the highs, mids, and lows, and these knobs can control the amount of content in each of those three frequency bands. You'll see that the colors of the waveform change as I slide them around, indicating that we're adding more content in that frequency band. You can also click the letters for each band separately, and those are kill switches that will immediately cut the highs, mids, and lows out of your track. And again, you can see that in the waveform. Below that, you have a effect knob, which by default is set to, set to a dual mode filter. Now you can use other effects here if you want, but I tend to use the filter because it gives me more control over the frequency content of my sounds. If you spin it counterclockwise, you get a low pass filter. And if you spin it clockwise, you get a high pass. So that sounds like this. So what I'm gonna do for this transition is I'm gonna start deck two by having all the lows taken out. And when deck one gets to um, uh, Q.8, 
I'm gonna again play the second deck, but this time I'm gonna leave the crossfader in the middle so that I get the full volume of the second deck, but again, without the low frequencies in it. This creates a pocket for the lows in the first deck to play and without, you know, without there being any competition over the low frequencies. Then, uh, getting close to the halfway point in the outro, I'm gonna start pulling the lows out of the first track, which will start to create a feeling of something's missing in the listener. It'll create a sense of anticipation so that when the first kick drum hits from the second track, I'll bring the lows in immediately and it'll sound very impactful. Finally, as the uh, track continues to play, I'll gradually bring the tempo down so it's back to 124. And if you do this you know, on the beat or even better at the start of a measure, and you bring it down in small increments, the audience won't really be able to hear it uh, very clearly. So you can get away with uh, uh, changing the tempo and it won't mess with the energy of your mix. So if we put it all together, it sounds like this. So now you understand the basics of DJing, how to set up your computer, prepare your tracks, and transition between them so you can perform the amazing music that you and others have produced. Of course, there are as many ways to change from one song to the next as there are DJs, but I'll leave you with a few final tips to help you on your journey. First, it's easiest to mix between two songs that are similar in key and tempo. If the tracks are far apart in key, Try changing between them at points in the songs where there are only drums and other percussive elements going on, so the harmonic contents of the songs don't try to compete with each other. If the songs are far apart in tempo, try transitioning at points where there isn't a lot of rhythmic activity in the songs, and so the tempo isn't enforced very strongly, things feel suspended in time. Alternatively, you can use a specialized track called a DJ tool that has a tempo change in the middle to reach your desired BPM. Finally, you can gradually increase the tempo of your set over the course of many songs by starting off with a slower song, mixing it into another song that's 1 to 3 BPMs faster, and continuing to do this until you reach your final desired tempo. This approach also creates a smooth, energetic progression to your set and subtly raises the excitement levels of your audience without them consciously noticing. As always, if you've enjoyed our time here together, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you here next time. Happy DJing!